CEO, former Cowboy Keyshawn Johnson, you Stephen a. with now. us now. No, <laughs> Stephen A. still wins. Whatever. Hey, Keith, thanks What's for up? being with us. Um, Stephen A., were you more impressed by the Cowboys in all seriousness or disappointed in your Steelers? I was disappointed in my Steelers because my expectations, obviously, they're my favorite team. We all know that. And when I think about the Steelers, I think about Super Bowl contention and the way that I see them playing. I think that they'll have, a, a, obviously, a good, a, a really good regular season, and then they'll get bounced out in the first round of the playoffs if they continue to play the way that they've played. Now, I understand that you've got this guy, I think is what is his name, Tyson Aluala. I believe that's his name. He's the nose tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers that's been out the last two games. I don't know if anybody's paid attention, but they've given up 265 yards rushing to the Baltimore Ravens, and then they follow up by giving up 144 yards rushing uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. So your run defense is a huge question mark. That's number one. Number two, where's your running game on the offensive side of the ball? I told y'all, listen, I'm a fan of James Conner, the person. I'm a fan because of the story and uh, the obstacles that he's overcome and the things that he's battled in his life, which are well documented. And I, and I have a profound respect, and I wish him nothing but the best. But let's be very clear. He is no Le'Veon Bell, at least the Le'Veon <laughs> Bell that was in the Pittsburgh Steelers uniform. Last year, or last night, rather, or yesterday afternoon, he averaged 2.4 yards a carry. That's not going to get it done. So your running game with him and, and Snell and these boys, it just ain't cutting the mustard. The Steelers don't have any running game worth its salt. They couldn't convert on a third and one. They couldn't convert on a fourth and one in the first half. And then we get to the coaching because as much as I love my brother Mike Tomlin, and we all know that I do, how the hell are you not going to kick the field goal and instead go to the running game on a fourth and one knowing that your team can't seem to run block, your offensive line can't seem to run block, and then you're going to sit up there and go on it for a fourth and one after they let you down not once but twice in the first half. You go for it again, and who got, who gets stopped? James Conner, once again, for a four-yard loss. She could have went up eight. Dallas would have had to score a touchdown, didn't get a two-point conversion, but that didn't happen because they were ended up only down five, and they were driving down for a winning score before Mika Fitzpatrick once again saved the day. He intercepted the ball in the end zone initially, but then he blocked the pass at the end of the game to preserve it. So I'm looking at a questionable run blocking on the offensive line. I'm looking at a questionable running game that has something to do with it, but but I'm still not sold on these running backs. I'm looking at their run defense, which is a huge question mark. I'm looking at Mike Tomlin having faith in a running game that's virtually non-existent. And I'm looking at a Pittsburgh Steelers team that looks at a big Ben Roethlisberger who balled yet again in the second half and deserves credit for that. But the only time they seem to have an offense is when they've got five <laughs> wide outs. You got Claypool. You got Juju Smith-Schuster, you got James Washington, you got Eric Ebron. I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at all of these guys. The only time they seem to have any kind, and Deontay Johnson, let me not forget him. The only time we have any kind of offense is when you've got five wideouts and absolutely no running game whatsoever, and you just got to throw the football. I don't know how that's going to bode well for the Pittsburgh Steelers come playoff time, and that's where my reticence lies. 8-0 and is nice. It's fine, good, and dandy. And if you had crowds in the in the, in the audience, in, in, the, in the stadium, rather, that would be good because that would be some kind of hostile environment for somebody to come to. But with that not being expected and you just having to rely on the game, I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing from my team right now. Well, real quick on the Steelers, because I disagree. I was more impressed by the Cowboys. It, 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 teams change over the course of a season. Like, you, you hear so often you want to get hot at the right time. I've seen teams make Super Bowl runs where you wouldn't have thought they'd have done it through the season, and they got stronger and stronger as the season went on. The Steelers are trending in the wrong direction because they went from looking strong like against the Browns, and they're trending worse and worse, worse struggle against the Giants, and, and you almost lose to the Cowboys. But they are winning, and I was impressed with the Cowboys. i got to be honest, Stephen A., you were the one calling for Mike McCarthy's job mid-season. And I, my basic attitude was, yeah, whatever. I don't know if it makes much of a difference. I get rid of him at the end of the season. But I got to tell you what I see when I'm seeing it. I thought he had them ready to play against the Eagles in a game they lost. And I thought he had them ready to play um, yesterday. You know, like, it, it, it took – look, they're dealing with no offensive line. They're dealing with, by the way, a linebacking core who I want to, oh, my God, late Nash and late Van Der Esch and, and Jalen Smith, oh, my God, what they're going to be. They really underachieved, and they, 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 they had some costly penalties yesterday. You, you know, and, and Mika Fitzpatrick making plays, that's what he does. He's a great player. Um, you, you, you were not expecting the Cowboys to win, and yet they came pretty close to beating a good team, a really good team, a team that hasn't lost, um, the only one that hasn't lost. And I got to give Mike McCarthy credit for that. Now, I realize the NFC East is so bad. 
Then at two and seven, they're only a half game out of first. So maybe they have a little more to play for than like the rest of us realize. But I have to give the head coach credit. Just like with Brady, you give him credit and then blame when it doesn't go well. Joe Judge is getting credit from the, you know, because of the Giants' readiness to play losing competitive games. I have seen the Cowboys get more and more competitive over the last couple weeks, and I got to give them credit for what their eighth string quarterback almost did yesterday behind no offensive line in a bad situation. They almost did it. Yeah, but, but Max, that's playing down to competition. Let's not fool yourself here. No, don't all of a sudden think that the Dallas Cowboys can take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Five out of five, the Steelers is going to win that football game every single time. And to you, Stephen A., I know you don't like the Steelers and the situation that they keep putting themselves in. But think about it. Over the course of the season in eight games, they've only outscored their opponent by more than six points to win games. It was the Cleveland Browns. Every single game, they play ugly to win. That's just Pittsburgh Steelers way. I know that they're not running the ball as well. And to Max's point, as time goes on, you get better and better come playoff time. You want to make sure that you're running the ball and you're playing defense because the weather will change. You won't be able to throw the ball all over the lot. But I believe in Mike Tomlin. I think Mike Tomlin is one of the top four head coaches in the National Football League. But I also believe that they'll get it turned around. If you look at that schedule that they have coming up, it's all favorable for them. Yeah. The only team that I made, you know, and, it, and it's still Baltimore, and they, they handed Baltimore their loss in a tough one. But if you look at that schedule right there, all those games are winnable. The Bengals, the Jags, the Ravens, Washington. The Bills could be tough. Bengals again, the Colts and the Browns. So they should have, have the one killers of, on there. None at all. So yeah. the Bills, Bills could no. be interesting and tricky. So they should have the one of the two seeds at the end of the season in the AFC. Yeah, well, one awesome. of the two seed don't really mean anything at this particular moment in time because you won't be playing in front of a home crowd. That's the thing that we got to point to here. I mean, if there was no COVID-19, then having a game at Heinz Field obviously would mean a whole hell of a lot. But the reality is, is that because of the times that we're living in, you know, that 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 home field advantage isn't as paramount as it was in the past. That's number one. Number two, let's or let's understand something here. Listen, we all love Mike Tomlin. We all know he's a great coach. The man doesn't have losing seasons. We get all of that. The flip side to it is that since 2008, they haven't had Super Bowl championship seasons either. They went to a Super Bowl in 2010, lost to Aaron Rodgers, haven't been back since. It's 10 years later. We get all of that. I'm looking at a Pittsburgh season. And I'm looking at habits in terms of how you go down. When you play a certain way, OK, and you and every every game is a nail biter. Every game comes down to the wire. You can't run rough shot over anybody. A matter of fact, you can't run against anybody at this particular moment in time. My experience watching the Pittsburgh Steelers is that that usually spells doom come postseason time. Big Your breaks that you had year. that you acquired in the regular season suddenly ain't there. Big difference this year. The number one roadblock for Tomlin repeating a Super Bowl champion or getting back has been Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. It's not the same anymore. You know, if you took Belichick out of this era, Key, you called Tomlin a top four coach. I think that's right, but I think you have a hell of an argument he's number one right now. You can argue that. I mean, Belichick has the Lifetime Achievement Award, no doubt, but he had Tomlin as a Super Bowl winning coach who, had not, who did not have a quarterback last year, went 8-8. Eight and eight. Now he has his quarterback and he's undefeated. You know, like, he has a hell of a case that he should be number one, and I think Hold that... On. The removal of the Patriots as we knew them takes out a big roadblock. I mean, you got um, the Chiefs there. So it's another big roadblock now. Huge roadblock. But at least not uh, the one that's been there for 20 years. Max Kellerman, uh, once again, you're wrong. You talked about the Patriots being the impediment to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Even though they didn't make the playoffs the last two years, and we know last season why, because Big Ben Roethlisberger was out. The previous four years that they had made the Super Bowl, they lost the AFC Championship game to the <clears> New England <throat> Patriots. The other three losses, who did they come from? They came against Jacksonville. They came against Denver, and they came against Baltimore. The Steelers find ways to lose in the postseason when their offense is not clicking the way you would like to find them to ways click. to lose. All right. Well, right now they're finding ways to win. So for the season, Ben ranks 19th in total QBR sandwich between Matthew Stafford and Phillip Rivers. Keyshawn, thank you for being with us. Appreciate you, sir. When we come back here on First Take, it's two a time on South Beach. Remember when we used to travel to places like South?